And this video is brought to you by Mumu. Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So previously I've done a landed sharing which got a lot of interest. So what I decided to do is to put it here on YouTube and I've broken it up into different parts that are easily digestible. So if you want to find out certain parts about landed, just go to my YouTube channel right now and you can find out the individual videos. So without further ado, let's start with the series. So this is where I want to share with you all the reason why there still isn't a lot of attention paid to landed, even though the volume is increasing. I can tell you, based on all the consultation that I do, you know, like I'm getting applications every day. Uh, majority are still focusing on, you know, HDB, condos, landed once in a while, right? Maybe each time I open up my application, right, I'll get maybe one landed at most, okay? So why aren't more people looking at landed? They are fo not focusing on landed, is this, okay? Number one, the quantum is higher, right? So yes, your per square foot in terms of size, uh, like let's say you buy a 2,600, 2,700 square feet lender, right? If you go by PSF, uh, it could be quite good, no? right? Your PSF uh, could be in the range of like, wow, 1,000 per square foot, okay? All right, or, or 1,005 per square foot, uh, I don't know, okay? But why? Why is it tough for people to buy when it's so cheap? It's because the area is big. So your quantum is high. Usually for freehold property right now, uh, the cheapest I can find uh, is about 3 million. Freehold. 99 is another story. 99 can be cheaper. Okay, but freehold is about 3 million. The next one is what? Is that like I said just now, uh, those of you who want to buy the OO type, uh, and then you're like, wow, Pete, I can rebuild myself. Very ambitious, right? Okay. This is where you want to factor in additional costs, right? The cost of renovation here uh, is, make a guess. What? What do you think uh, is the range of cost of renovation or construction, uh, reconstruction of a, con uh, of a landed? Type in the chat. What do you think? From how much to how much? Okay. All right. Type in the chat. Uh. It is a higher construction cost and renovation cost. Why? Because generally, right, it costs you uh, ranging uh, from as little as 300000 all the way to if you rebuild the whole damn thing and you decked it out nicely, uh, could be $2 million and above. Now, before we continue, just a quick word from our sponsor. If you need a new brokerage, you must watch this. Now, if you're exploring a new brokerage account, do you know that right now, Mumu is giving a fantastic sign-up bonus? All you need to do is to open an account and you'll receive $40 of cashback coupon where you can use this to buy stocks or even trade on the Mumu platform. And when you deposit just $100, you will receive $60 of cashback. And for those of you who are really serious about using the brokerage, if you deposit just $2,700, you will receive up to one Amazon stock, which is currently worth more than 115 US dollars. So you want to find out more about Mumu or just open an account to get all these freebies, I'll put the link down below. And once again, thank you Mumu for being the sponsors of this video. Let's get back to the video. All right, so whenever you buy lender, you're not just paying 3, 3 million, no. You might need to add another 1 million, 2 million. Uh. So yes, the per square foot looks attractive, but there are additional costs. Unlike you buy a condo or you buy a HDB, your renovation costs, even if you really splurge, uh, maybe 100 plus K, 200 K max, okay? Now, the third and last reason why not more people are focusing on lender, right, is there's this knowledge gap. Why? Because when you go and search the transaction uh, data for lender, right, there are very few transactions out there, right? Even in popular areas, like I showed you just now, right, even when you look at popular area, for example, where is it? Uh, here, okay? You can see that the whole year, uh, they only transact, like what? 800 units, uh, 400 units, uh, 500 units. That means per month, uh, you are seeing in the range of like, I don't know, like less than 30 transactions. Okay. In the whole area, in, in the whole district. Eh? That means if you split out to the area, maybe each area only have 10 transactions tops. Okay. So there's a very, very big knowledge gap over there. Because when people look at it, they're like, huh? What's going on? Uh? Like, not much activity happening. Okay. And this is where I must share with you all one thing. Uh, is that this is something that is quite common in landed that is also quite common in HDB. Uh, okay? When you all buy HDB, right? A lot of times when seller wants to sell, right? They will say, this is the valuation, I'll add what? What is that three-letter word that a lot of people don't like? Right? <laughs> that scare people away. What is it? Something over what? <laughs> yeah, COV. Cash over valuation, right? So COV is something that is quite common in HDB as well as landed. Ah, okay? As well as landed. Why? Because very few transactions or fewer transactions. So the banks, right, they cannot value it 
properly based on the past transaction. So the bank generally want to be a bit more conservative. Ah. They'll be more safer. They will give you a valuation that is a bit lower. Okay. So COV is actually happening quite often in lender. And usually COV, uh, when I ask uh, some of the bankers, uh, right, I say, hey, what is the common COV for lender, right? All right. They say ranges between how, how much, okay? Depending on the district, uh, but it ranges between 100K to about 800K or more also have. <laughs> so it depends on your, on your lender size. So this is something that scares away a lot of people. That's why when people look at lender, they're like, ah, because COV, they should have done the buy already. But this is where they are making a huge mistake. Right, huge mistake. Why? Because when you're buying landed, you cannot just look at past transaction. Why? Because the past transaction doesn't tell you whether this property is a new build or is it a, a original condition. Right? So when the when the market moves, right, and people still stick on to the old price, right? Then they end up missing out the good opportunities. Okay. And there are other factors to also consider when you look at prices. All right. So now I'm gonna go into the factors uh, for you all to consider when look at landed property. Okay, hey, since more of you all just joined again, uh, let me just ask one more time. Uh, how many of you all here are looking at uh, potentially buying a landed? Okay, can you type in L? Type in L in the chat. Okay, those of you on Facebook as well. Uh, hey, those of you on Facebook, come to Zoom. La. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me put the invitation link for you. Uh. Okay, then you, all can, then you all can ask me questions. Otherwise, you are all on Zoom. Uh, then I cannot, I cannot. Uh, all on Facebook, cannot talk to you. <laughs> all right. And later, I'll have a Q&A at the back for those of you who want to look at, uh, who want to ask me questions. Okay. So let's look at some of the factors to consider. Okay. So Jasmine is considering. That's great. Okay. So condition. Ah, the first one is the condition of the house. Right. Because the land, uh, you cannot change it. The land is just like, okay, the land is whatever you see on the SLA document. But there are different types of condition. So first one is you've got something that is like brand new. For example, someone just bought the land, they rebuild, right? They sell to you, that's called brand new, okay? Anything that is like maybe less than, I would say 10 years old, uh, is considered still new, okay? Still new. That means it's not brand new, but when you go in, you're like, wow, actually everything is still pretty okay. You know, the paint is still white, the, the ground is still all right, no, nothing too, too bad. Very, very often, the criteria for still new, uh, okay? You want me to guess, is which part of the house? Ah, this one you all don't know. Uh. You must, must, you all must learn all these. Uh. okay. You all must go and check what, check the toilet. Ah, okay. Because a lot of times when they do a build, right, they can renovate a lot of things. Uh, but they may not change the piping, the toilet. So to sometimes to the new, the savvy buyers, uh, they will go and look at the toilet. If it's a new toilet, wow, brand new piping, everything, they know that the construction is solid, still pretty recent. Okay. And then thirdly, you have those that I consider called live in condition. That means you can live inside but maybe not the newest thing out there, okay? And last but not least, dun, dun, dun. They give it a very nice name. Uh. They call it original. Okay, guys, uh, original. Well, I actually like this, I like this uh, naming. Eh. Maybe next time when I'm older, uh, I tell people, guys, I'm not old. I am just original. <laughs> original means super old. Uh, okay? They have never done anything. It is the original state, right? So such property usually uh, is in the range of like 20, 30 years. At least, uh, okay. Uh, so for my audience here, ah, those of you who are a bit elderly, going to be like me and older, uh, we are original, okay. <laughs> Later, I'll share with you the, the, the issues with brand new versus original. Uh. The second thing you want to consider is this. What is the possible maximum GFA? Uh, that means gloss floor area, right? That you can build for this uh, property, okay. There are some areas that you can build up to three story plus, some areas only two story plus. Okay, this matters. Later, you will see some of the, the condition that you can find out. Okay, and of course, there are other factors. Uh. For example, where is it along the street? Any power station, substation nearby? Usually, you want to avoid those. Okay, and another thing is this. Hey, outside my house, can I park a car? Because there are some lenders, right, where outside is the main road really, you know. Then they cannot park their car. So actually, that one is a bit less desirable sometimes. Whereas, if you're on an offshoot, smaller road, ah, uh, then outside, you know, don't have double yellow line. You can park your car. You can do a lot of things. Uh, so those are sometimes preferred by some buyers also. Like I said, guys, remember this. When you buy landed, the people who will buy from you in the future, okay, are usually people who are looking for lifestyle. They are not so price sensitive because if they are price sensitive, they won't even come to lender in the first place. They will stick to the HDB, they will stick to the condo first. Okay, so when you buy, you must also think about, hey, your future buyer, uh, what do they look out for? Okay, 
Now, having said that, let's go into the different types of landed they can consider. All right. So this one I just want to share. I shamelessly plucked from uh where? I think I plucked from uh 99 uh Sidley, or is it 99.co? I can't remember. Okay, one of those are okay. I plucked from them one, okay? But they are very comprehensive. So the first type uh, is what they call GCB. Uh, good class bungalow. These are the very rich one. Usually super huge. Uh, okay. Now, if you are buying something smaller that is usually like half the size of a GCB, it's what we call a detach. Uh, they break it up into two, uh, detach. Okay. Detach, bungalow. They call it bungalow. Okay. Now, the next type, after detach, uh, they can still break it up some more. No? Okay. So imagine this is a detached house. Uh, they break it up into half. It's called a semi-D. Uh, semi-D is a term that I think most of you all are familiar with. Right? So when someone calls a semi-D, actually, it's not semi, it's quarter because it's a GCB cut by half, then cut by half again. Okay? <laughs> right? So how does it work? Semi-D is you share a common wall over here. Okay? That's a common wall. And then each of you have one side of the boundary wall. Lah. Then you get some space at the side. Okay? Now, there's another type of lender that is a stretch of semi-D, then they further cut it down, which is the terraces. Okay, so inter terrace that means anything in the middle, you share a, a common wall over here, common wall over here, common wall over here, and then you have two corner terraces at the side. All right, so the corner terraces enjoy a bit more space. Okay, over here. All right, otherwise, your inter terrace, you literally just share your wall with your neighbor, but you are still landed. And take note terrace houses must be at least three. That means uh, it must minimally be one co two corner terraces and one inter terraces. Okay. So these are the different types of landed. Of course, there are still others that are what we call strata landed. Basically, they are also this kind of landed, but they are inside a condo area. Those are called strata landed. All right, so I won't cover so much strata landed in this scenario because what I want to share with you all is the true landed landed. Okay, now, like I said, just now that I shared before, there are different types of landed area in Singapore. Of course, other than the GCB area, generally there are only two types which is the two-story mixed landed and the three-story. So you can see, uh, this is the uh, Marymount, Pemimpin, Bishan area. So one of the top, uh, D20, I just want to show you. Uh. So you can see district, I was sorry, two-story semi-D. You can see uh, two-story, right? So these are all semi-Ds. Then you have the two-story mixed development. So this usually they can build two stories, okay? Over here, plus an attic. Ah, two plus a bit, okay? Then the three-story mixed landed, Ah, then they can build more. They can build one story, two story, three story, plus another attic. Okay? So these are the different, different types of landed. And so if you buy a two story landed, you cannot go and build three and a half. Ah. Okay? <laughs> cannot do that. Ah. All right? So these are the main areas. It really depends on you. How, what, what kind of uh, size and what kind of height you want to go. Okay? Generally, terraces, I would prefer to go for at least three stories. Why? Because your land size is a bit more uh, type. So you want to have the ability uh, to build upwards. Ah, okay. All right. So for terraces, I usually will go and aim for the three stories. Uh. Now, with that said, let's look at the main topic, which a lot of people ask me after they watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, they say, hey, Pete, I heard some people say best go and buy the very, very old one, uh, like this type of uh. the original condition. Okay. Old means old. Uh, okay. The older ones are uh, okay. Original condition. Or should I buy a new one? Ah, so tonight. I'll share with you what are the things to look at. Uh. Both are possible, but it depends on you because only one type will suit you. Uh, okay. So I give you a, a, a case study. Okay. I, can, I cannot name the real person name here and the real house. So I'm just going to use this picture again. Okay. Which is, okay. The person bought it about 3.3 mil. Uh, all right. And then the square feet right, was about 1,200. Back then it was the original condition. So it need a lot of renovation need a lot of construction. And when the person bought, right, it's also very similar uh, to this kind of picture where there are a bit more land in front. Okay, but not exactly like this. There's a, there's a land at the side. So he thought that, hey, this thing at the side, uh, maybe I can build a bit more. They wanted to do something to the land. Okay? But lo and behold, what happened? When they go and check the plans, uh, and they already put the option fee, you know, they found that actually that area they cannot build. Why? Because there is a pipe. There is a service pipe, okay, that runs under the ground, right? So this is actually one of the, the, the danger of buying an old uh, uh, landed is that you need to really know your stuff about landed. You need to know that, oh, I must go and check the ground plans. I must go and check uh, all the approval and stuff like that. And you need to spend a lot of money to do that as well, okay? 
So I want to show you some real life example that is right now on the market uh, that you can look at for you to compare the original ones, okay, versus the new one. All right, original versus the new. So let's look at the original first. Uh, okay, so this is actually a Mefferson Garden Estate. All right. Hey, how many of y'all know where this is? Uh? Are y'all living near to this area? Okay, are y'all familiar with Macpherson? If you are, type in me. Okay, if you are familiar, type in me. Right, so this is the Macpherson area. I cover out the, the number. Hey, oh, shit, I never covered out the number, sorry. Okay, <laughs> all right. But overall, when, I, when the students send me this, they're like, hey, Pete, wow, 2.28 million. Very cheap, eh? Very good, eh? <laughs> okay. Hey, but guys, look at this. Uh. Look at this condition. It is really very original. Okay. Or should I say it's, it's old, it's old, okay? <laughs> Alright, over here, I can see. Uh, eh, sorry, sorry, keep, keep shifting it. Alright, this is quite an original condition. Usually when you see this kind of roof, uh, you know, right? And this is a single story, uh, even though it's in a two-story landed area. Okay, and you can see the inside condition. I don't think, I wouldn't consider this as lift-in. Uh, right? It is really uh, what I call original. You really have to do renovation, for sure. Okay, so let's, Go through, uh, if you were to buy this, how much can you, uh, can you expect to generate in terms of more square foot? Uh? So when I go and look at the plans, right, I think this landed can build another 1,500 square feet because they can build another floor plus the, the attic on top. Okay, so this is original condition. So when I look at it right now, I think when you do reconstruction, maybe about 400 to 500 per square foot for every square foot you need to build. Uh. So I think it will generally add out to about, about 80K uh, to build another 1.5 story. And then uh, you still need to put in another about $200 uh, to renovate the whole place. Okay. All right. So the total cost uh, to buy this, right, is actually not 2.2. Uh, unless you tell me you buy and you're willing to stay in this condition, right? Okay. <laughs> if you're not willing to stay in this condition, you want to maximize the gross floor area and stuff. Okay. The total cost uh, can go up to about 3.3 and above. Which is why just now I told you, the cheapest landed I can find that is livable, uh, in my opinion, right, is not less than 3 million for freehold. Definitely not. And this is freehold. Uh, okay, this is freehold. All right. Show you another one, which is at Coven area. All right, Coven area. So this is your D19 area. This is close to 3 million. All right. And it's very close to Coven MRT. Pretty good. All right. And it's also a terrace house that's freehold as well. So let's take a look. What are the pictures inside? Uh? So this is the picture. You can see, um, I would say this is um, leave-in condition. Why? Because you know, it's still pretty clean, still pretty tidy. You probably just need to do a bit of renovation. Or if you don't want, you can go and put your, your, your furniture. I'll go and buy good furniture. Okay. Now this one, likely you can build another 1,200 square feet more. Right? Okay. This is original. Well, it's leave-in, but it's still original condition. So when I look at it, I think it's about maybe another half a million to build another one and a half story. Okay, and also once again, another $200 for renovation. So all in cost for this, uh, dun, 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 is not 3 million, uh, it's about 3.7 million already. Okay, close to 3.7 million right now. Okay, so when you look at older properties, right, this is what you must consider. Okay, if you want to buy an old property, you want to redevelop, right? I know out there, a lot of people say, wow, this is very good, like go mine. Uh. Okay, true, if you know what to do and you have a lot of money. <laughs> Right, so which is why I kind of like new ones sometimes. Why? Because when you buy this kind uh, that you look at it, this uh, that is just built one. Uh, how you know it's just built? You see here, they don't even have a doorbell. You know, they have a power socket only. Okay, <laughs> no doorbell, only got one power socket. That means you know that it's new. Uh. this kind usually is what they already maximize the gloss floor area for you. That means they build to the maximum they can already. In this case, this is a three and a half story. Can you see? One, two, three and a half. Okay, they build to the max already. And this type, usually when you go in, to be very frank, you don't need to do much furniture. If uh, renovation, you just need to bring your furniture, maybe do a bit of carpentry if you want. Okay? And for the whole sum uh, of the purchase price, you can take your 75% loan. No issue. Okay? 75% loan, no issue. And this one, I will say, uh, of course, these are all good, good, good. Uh, but what is the downside? The downside is, of course, because someone already built the place for you, uh, okay? you need to pay a little bit of premium for it, right? You cannot expect the guy, so good, right? Go and buy the land, build for you, then charge you cost price. Not so stupid, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so yes, you'll pay a bit of premium over here, right? But it really saves you a lot of hassle. Why? 
Because in this case, all your approval, your plans, all this is done already. Because if those are not done, they couldn't have built it in the first place. Okay? All right? So I call this is the what you see is what you get. All right? Or not if. Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Not if. What you see is what you get. Right? No need to go and say, oh, I must go and find contractor and review and everything. Okay? So I just quickly compare the two for you all again. Uh, for your, those of you who are considering whether you are buying new or buying old. All right? Is that, yes, if you buy new, like I said, you don't need to do your any rebuild or renovation lightly. It's maybe it's like brand new or even like still new. Uh, these two, okay? But for old one, then you probably need to do a bit of rebuild. If you are rebuilding, right now the rebuild cost uh, is about 400 PSS to about 450. And recently I even heard reaching about 500 per square foot in terms of cost. Okay, just construction only. Uh. Not ID. Uh. ID is another cost. Okay? Now the next one is in terms of restrictions and regulations. The new one will be already approved, ma, right? Everything is done for you. Already. You you it's so long you don't go and like hack down anything on the ground again to go and expose the pipe. Ma. You are generally quite safe. But for the old one, please make sure uh, when you're gonna buy your old one, okay, and you're gonna rebuild, hire a proper architect, your land surveyor, all this. Okay, this type of money cannot save one. Uh. You must make sure all these are done. In fact, even before you buy the old lender, uh, bring in a surveyor to check the place, make sure you know you can build what you want to build. Uh. All right, don't be like one of my clients who already bought it and come and ask me, hey, Pete, how I save it? I cannot save it because I'm not BCA, you know, I cannot change the law. Okay, so make sure you do all this homework in advance. Third one, construction costs. Okay, the construction costs for the new one will be already in the purchase price. Okay, which is, which is good. You don't need to worry about, oh, later on you fork out like a lot more to reconstruct. And you can take loan for it since it's the part of the purchase price. Okay. Now, for the old one, can we take a loan for construction? I think Prem was asking that, right? Okay. The answer is yes. You can take a construction loan. However, however, construction loan interest is higher than the home loan interest. Okay. Home loan interest is always going to be the cheapest in the whole Singapore. <laughs> right? Because there is a, it's an actual asset over there. But when you construct a new place, the bank is taking a bit of risk on you. Why? Because yes, they can lend you $1 million and they say you go and construct. And you can argue that the $1 million will go to the value of the house. But what if you construct poorly? Ah, so these are the risks that bank cannot control. So to offset that, they have to charge you a bit of a higher interest. Lah. Okay, so I, I think that answers Prem's question. Ah. Uh, let me see if any questions in Facebook. Okay, guys, any questions, just type in the chat. Ah. Okay, so understand the main difference between new and old. Ah, to me, it's very simple. O. You can buy cheap, you can sort of build yourself, maybe you can control the cost, but it's a lot more hassle and more interest to pay. Lah. Whereas the new one is, yes, you pay a premium upfront for that is properly built, uh, but the saving grace is what? You don't need to face all the regulation, restriction, and even the hassle of like going through big construction, renovation again. Lah. Okay, Those of you who did renovation for condo, this is, imagine, ah, like if you buy your old one and rebuild, ah, it's like, 10 times worse. Uh, okay? 10 times worse. So in terms of cost comparison, let me just share with you uh, how to compare, right? For example, in this scenario, uh, if you buy a 3.5 mil, let's say for this one, uh, you buy 3.5 mil, your down payment is about 1 mil. Okay? Down payment is about 1 mil. Right? Because 25%. Ma. Then your old one, maybe you can buy cheap, uh, you buy 2.8 mil, right? This one. Then but your reconstruction, everything, okay, I give you discount. Uh, we don't build so much. Uh. We build 700k will do. Why 700K? Because I want to bring the total cost to be about the same. Okay, 3.5 mil. So yes, in this case, while 2.8 mil, your down payment is lesser, right? It's only about 800,000. But take note, your CNR, your construction and renovation down payment, uh, is another $175,000. You know? Okay? So really, your, your total down payment here, right? It's not going to be any different. But in fact, uh, your this 700, $175,000 uh, is a much higher interest. Okay? And one more thing is that not just the money, not just the tangible, uh, but the intangible as well. New one to me is fast free. Uh. And one important thing is this. If you are an investor, uh, okay, how many of you here are looking at landed as an investment one? Can you type in I? Those of you who are looking at landed for investment, can you type in I? Right? If you are an investor, then you really want to get the property as soon as you can, right? So that you can what? You can rent it out. Or you want to move in, you can also do that, right? Whereas 
if you are looking at uh, the O1, uh, you need to spend quite a lot of time uh, for approval, contract building and stuff like that. You must wait. Uh. And usually how long? Okay, so this one is, 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 a, is a ballpark. Uh. It's not actually accurate. Uh. For approval all to be done, usually uh, is about four to five months. Everything to be clear. Your architect go and draw everything. Oh, sorry, not four to five. Four to five months. Sorry, sorry, four to five months. Okay. <clears throat> then the construction, maybe another four to five months. So overall, you need to wait about eight to 10 months. So close to a year, uh, the waiting time. So think about how much rental you would have lost uh, if you wait for a year. And another thing, if you are waiting to move in, then you say, hey, but it's constructing, I cannot move in. What must you do? Go outside and rent, right? And guess what? The rent now not cheap, you know? So you're going to delay another year. So it's either you're going to miss out on one year of rent that can collect, or you are going to pay another whole year of rent before you can move in. Okay? So yes, old has its benefit, but new also has its benefit. All right? So my approach for lender is actually quite straightforward. Lah. Okay? Uh, and oh, yeah, one more thing is this. Some students say, wow, they're very cheeky. Yeah. They say, hey, Pete, what if I don't renovate? Cannot. Okay. Like I said, if you can stay in this condition, right? Then I say, yes, go ahead. <laughs> you don't renovate, fine. But if you're an investor, you're looking at investment value. If you don't renovate, it's very hard to rent out because not many people are willing to rent from you a property like this. Okay? Not many people are willing to rent from you a property that looks like this. Okay? All right? So my approach is very simple. For beginners, I would generally suggest uh, you maybe buy the brand new or still new where you don't have to do too much work. Once you stay in the landed long enough already, you know the name of the game already. Uh, okay, uh, then you go and do your own plug like this. Uh, okay, Why is this plug? <laughs> this is the plug you put outside your bungalow or your landed uh, when you're going to construct. Because why? This is really only for the experience. Why? Because you need to hire architect. You need to hire civil and structural engineer. You need a QS, a quantitative surveyor. You need the builder, okay? Then on top of that, maybe you need an interior designer. I don't know, okay? So you need all these uh, to help you go and build a new place, renovate, and get all the approval done. Uh. Okay, so if you're going to do a new build, right? Yes, you can consider a lift in right, and original, and then you build it up to become new or even still new. But make sure you always engage the good professionals. Don't save on this kind of money. Not worth it. Okay? Now, my approach, not just for beginner and experienced in, uh, uh, lender people, is also between own stayers and investors. Okay? So I would say own stayers, right? Now, whatever I say about the old one, uh, if you can accept it, uh, good. Then actually, you can go ahead and buy as old as you want. Uh, okay? Hey, but guys, please, uh, for goodness sake, uh, if you are buying a lender, right, you are actually trying to you know, enjoy a quality of life, right? So please don't torture yourself <laughs> to go and buy a very, very like, you know, a very rundown lender and then you're like, wow, every day unhappy. Uh. Then your wife hate you, your mother-in-law hate you, your children hate you, okay? So don't do that, right? And for the investors, if you are buying the old one, okay? And even you're buying the lift in one, uh, do give it a quick renovation. Right? Make sure at least you go in, uh, everything is nice. Because the original uh, condition type right, is very hard to rent. And the rental will be much, much, much lower. Okay? I have clients uh, who tell me, hey, Pete, I'm now staying in a, a lender. I say, wow, hey, how much is your rent? Uh? They tell me, wow, my rent very cheap, 4,000 plus only. I say, wow, how come so cheap? Then I saw the picture of the house. I said, oh, no wonder so cheap. <laughs> okay? Because the condition is very poor. Uh, the condition is very, very bad. All right, so take note, if you're an investor, you want to rent out, you must do some basic level of renovation at least. Uh, uh, and for lender, I would say usually minimally uh, is in like maybe 800, 80K to maybe 120K, around there. The basic you want to do, uh, you repay, then you do a bit of carpentry, stuff like that. Okay? Now, the next part I want to go into uh, is comparing lender to condo. Which one suits? Okay, and really, if you are ever considering uh, landed versus condo, right, it will only be because you are considering these two types. You are considering a large condo unit, okay, versus a landed property. Because only this will make a good comparison. Basically, both of them, the size are about there. Ah, then you want to make a comparison. 